Hi everyone. So right now we're going to start uh, our introduction to rational expressions. So what is a rational expression? So a rational expression is just a fraction, right? So you have a numerator and denominator. So n is the numerator. D is the denominator, right? D for down or denominator. And so it can't just be any fraction. It has to be a fraction where the numerator and denominator are polynomials, right? And we know what those are by now. We've been, we've been spending the whole last chapter factoring polynomials, so we know what polynomials are. So some examples of rational expressions. So 3 over 4 is you think of as a fraction. So we have a monomial divided by a monomial, so it qualifies as a rational expression. But you can also have things like, you know, x over w, right? So this is also a rational expression. You can have uh, x plus 3 over x squared minus 4, right? So this is also a rational expression, right? And you can get, you know, higher degrees or higher exponents, so you might have, you know, 3x to the 4 minus 6x to the 3 plus 7 divided by x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x, right? So this is also a rational expression. Um, and you don't have to have the same number of terms, right? So you have trinomial divided by trinomial, right? You might just have, you know, x minus 7 over x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 7. So all of these are rational expressions. So, you know, then you might ask, well, what is not a rational expression? So if, suppose I have uh, 3 minus the square root of x divided by x. So this is not a rational expression because we don't have square root of x in polynomials. Okay. Um, and you can also write things like 2 over x divided by, you know, 3 plus x over x minus 1, right? This is not a rational expression because 2 over x is not a polynomial, and neither is 3 plus x over x minus 1, right? So the point is that all of these, right, are not polynomials. Right? And so these are these are not rational expressions. Although they are fractions. So, right. So a rational expression is just a, a specific type of fraction where the numerator and denominator are polynomials. Okay? Okay, so the next thing we want to do um, is evaluate rational expressions. So here's our first example. We are given the rational expression, right, 3x minus 1 over x plus 3. So right, I hope you agree this is a rational expression because the numerator and denominator are both polynomials. They're binomials, for example, two terms each. And so we want to evaluate this rational expression at x equals negative 2. Right, so what does it mean to evaluate? It basically just means plug it in. Right, so we're going to plug in x equals negative 2 wherever we see an x. Right? So instead of 3 times x, it's 3 times negative 2, right, minus 1, over instead of x plus 3, it's negative 2 plus 3. And you just have to right, simplify it. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Right? And negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And negative 7 divided by 1 is just negative 7. So we evaluated the expression 3x minus 1 over x plus 3 at x equals negative 2. And we got our answer. Our answer is negative 7. Right? So when you plug in a number, you just get another number. Okay. 
And, you know, there's nothing magical about negative 2. Suppose maybe part B, yeah, sorry about that, part B, we want to evaluate the same expression, but this time at x equals uh, 8. So what happens if x is 8? Well, right, so instead of 3 times x minus 1 over x plus 3, we change x to 8. So it's 3 times 8 minus 1 over 8 plus 3. So 3 times 8 is 24. And 24 minus 1 is 23. And 8 plus 3 is 11. So we get 23 over 11. And we'll talk about this in a little bit, but this is in lowest terms, so it's already simplified. Um, you could, of course, rewrite this as uh, a mixed numeral. So 23 divided by 11 is 2, right? And the remainder is 1. So it's 2 and 1 over 11, or 2 plus 1 over 11. So, you know, if you know how to do that, great. If not, that's okay, because in this class, we, we, we actually prefer the improper fractions. So I would prefer you leave it as 23 over 11 instead of 2 and 1 11. Okay. Okay, so here's one you can try on your own. Evaluate x plus 5 over x squared minus 7 at x equals 3 and x equals negative 6. Okay, so you're going to get two answers here, right? One for x equals 3 and then another answer for x equals negative 6. So you can call these part A and part B, if you will. Okay, so for part A, we'll just replace x with 3. So we get 3 plus 5 over 3 squared minus 7. Right? So 3 plus 5 is 8. 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 minus 7 is 2. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So your answer for part A should just be 4. For part B, we'll change x to negative 6. And don't forget you're squaring a negative. So the numerator is negative 6 plus 5 is just negative 1. But the denominator, right, is not negative 36. It's negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36 minus 7. So 36 minus 7 is 29. So we get negative 1 over 29. So that's the answer for part B. Right. And in fact, yeah, you don't want to change this to a decimal or anything else. Just leave it as negative 1 over 29. Okay, good. So that's evaluating fractions uh, or rational expressions at particular values of x, right? So, yeah, hopefully not, not too difficult. Okay, so the next thing we want to do concerning rational expressions is to find restricted values. Okay, so what is a restricted value, right? So a restricted value is a number, right? Let's call it x. And this, for this value of x, it makes the denominator equal to 0. Okay, and hopefully you remember that it's, it's pretty bad to have a denominator of 0. Um, but the numerator can be 0, right? So 0 divided by 2, right, is just 0. And we know this because if we take 0 times 2, right, we get 0. Right? In, in the same way that, right, 8 divided by 2 is 4 because... Right, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay. On the other hand, 2 divided by 0 is what? Well, it's a number, right? So that's why I have this little question mark here. So try to think of a number that when you multiply by 0, you get 2. So what number times 0 equals 2? Okay, well, we know it's not, it's not 2. Well, we know it's not 0, because 0 times 0 is definitely not 2. 0 times 0 is 0, and 0 is not the same as 2. 
right? But it's not 2 either, because 2 times 0 is also not equal to 2. 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 definitely, oops, does not equal 2. And any other number you think of, you know, uh, 39, right? 39 times 0 is not going to be 2. In fact, anything times 0, right? Anything times 0 has to be 0, which means it cannot be 2. Okay. So this question mark here is not a number. It's just nonsense, right? So if it's not a number, you know, then we really don't know what it is, right? It's, it's not something that we define. So we call this undefined because it's, it doesn't make any sense uh, to think of this as a number. So 2 divided by 0 is just not a number. It's undefined. Right. OK, so what does this have to do with restricted values? Well, for example, if I have, uh, let's just say, 5 divided by x, right? That's a, that's a rational expression. However, the denominator cannot be 0. So x cannot be 0. Right? So we call 0 a restricted value. Right? So anything that makes the denominator 0, in this case, when x is 0, then it's undefined. Right? So I know this is a little sloppy here, but we call 0, in this case, a restricted value. So let's think of another example. Suppose I have um, x divided by x minus 3. So what would the restricted value here be? Well, the denominator is x minus 3. Right? When does x minus 3 become 0? Right, when x is 3. Right? 3 minus 3 is 0. So in this case, x equals 3 is a restricted value. Okay. Right. Um, notice that 0 is not a restricted value, even though if I plug in x equals 0, the numerator would be 0. But that's okay, right? We already said that the numerator can be 0, as, as in 0 divided by 2. It's, it's just 0. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the number 0 unless it's in the denominator, right? That's what could make it a restricted value, right, if the denominator is 0. Okay. Okay, so how do we find the restricted values? Well, to find the restricted values of a rational expression, let's say n over d, n being the numerator, d being the denominator, we're going to solve the equation d equals 0, right? So we set the denominator equal to 0, and we solve that equation. Any solution that we get will be a restricted value, right? And in fact, we, we just did this in the previous example up here. Um, I forgot. I stopped labeling them. So this is example 3. This is example 4. So in example 4, right, we took the denominator x minus 3, we set it equal to 0, and we solve for x. And we more or less just did this in our heads, right? Officially, you add the 3 to both sides, and that's what gives us x equals 3 here, right? So that's how we got the restricted value, right? So in general, this might be a more complicated uh, thing to do. So let's look at an example. Okay. So example 5, right? So, uh, Find the restricted values, right? There could be more than one, but find the restricted values of x cubed plus 8 over x squared plus 9x minus 36. Okay, so according to this procedure up here, we take the denominator, right? So, right, so, the, so n is just x cubed plus 3, and d, in this case, is the denominator, x squared plus 9x minus 36. So what do we do with that? We set it equal to 0. Right? And now we have to solve this equation. Right? And this is something you did in the previous chapter. Right? That was on your, your last test. In order to solve an equation like this, we have to be able to 
factor the left side. Notice it's already in standard form. So what two numbers multiply to negative 36, right, and add to positive 9? So the sum has to be 9. Well, let's start with negative 1 and 36. Negative 1 plus 36 is 35, which is not 9, but it is positive, so we have the right uh, the right negative sign in the right place, right? We could do negative 2 times, oops, positive 18, but negative 2 plus 18 is 16, which is not equal to 9, so that's not a match. We could do negative 3 times 12, and negative 3 plus 12 is 9. Well, there's our match, right? So we can factor this as x minus 3 times x plus 12. But the question wasn't to factor, the question was to solve the equation. So after we factor, now we set both factors equal to 0. Right, so x minus 3 equals 0. If we add the 3 to both sides, we get x equals 3. And for x plus 12 equals 0, we have to subtract 12 from both sides, giving us x equals negative 12. So you can check, in fact, you, you should check, that these are solutions to this equation up here. And that's what makes them restricted values, right? Any solution that you get will be a restricted value. So yes, this rational expression, x cubed plus 8 over x squared plus 9x minus 36, has two restricted values. Right. And they are. 3 and negative 12. Okay. Because both of these numbers, when plugged into x, will make the denominator equal to 0. Right? That's how we got them in the first place. Okay. So that's how to find restricted values. Okay. Here's one you can try on your own. Find the restricted values of x plus 5 over x squared minus 16. And as a hint, uh, you should get two restricted values for this. Right? So if you're only getting one, it's not enough. Okay, right, so here the denominator is x squared minus 16. So what do we do with that? We set it equal to zero, right? and then we solve. So we have to solve this equation, right? This is in standard form because it equals zero. And so we have to factor the left side, x squared minus 16. And you should recognize 16 as 4 times 4. It's a perfect square. Right? So this looks a lot like a squared minus b squared, which you remember how to factor is a minus b times a plus b. So x squared minus 4 squared um, should factor as x minus 4 times x plus 4. Okay, so that's how to factor, but remember we also have to solve the equation. We set it equal to 0. And so now we just set each factor equal to 0. So for one of them, you add 4 to both sides and you get x equals 4. And the other, you subtract 4 from both sides, so you get x equals negative 4. So two solutions. And so that means this has two restricted values, right? So the restricted values are 4 and negative 4. OK. All right. So yeah, so that's how to find restricted values. OK, next thing we need to do and this is, this is very important. We're going to simplify rational expressions. Okay, so how do we simplify a rational expression, right? So one way to think of it is you have, right, P, Q, and R. These are all polynomials where Q and R are not 0. So if we can take the numerator as P times R and the denominator is Q times R, right? One thing we'll learn later is how to multiply fractions, and you multiply just straight across. So it turns out that we can split these up as P 
p over q times r over r. But r divided by r, I mean, you know, think of 7 divided by 7, right? That's just 1, you know, or negative, negative 5 divided by negative 5, right? That's also 1. So I think it's pretty clear that anything divided by itself, like x divided by x, will always be equal to 1. And so, right, if it's equal to 1, this is really just sorry, p over q. Ah, wrong color. p over q times 1. But anything times 1 is itself. So this is just p over q. So what this looks like then is that r divided by r, because it's equal to 1, just kind of goes away. You can cancel the r's, the factors of r. Okay, so, so simplifying rational expressions, this is sometimes just called canceling. Right? But you have to be very careful because this only works when you're multiplying. It doesn't work when you're adding or subtracting. And I'm going to emphasize that point quite a lot. I'm going to say it over and over again because this is a very common mistake, right? So Right. Another way to think of rational, uh, sorry, simplifying rational expressions is to simply cancel the common factors or to reduce to their lowest terms. Okay, so for our first example, let's simplify 21 over 35. Right. And this is something that you, you probably have done many times before, um, and maybe not in the same way that we're going to do it, but it's the same idea. So 21 over 35, right? How do we simplify that? So we have to factor the numerator, 21, right? And you should know that 21 is just 3 times 7, right? And the denominator, 35, is 5 times 7. So now it's pretty clear that we have, right, p times r over q times r. In this case, p is 3, q is 5, and r is 7. Well, if that's the case, right, 7 divided by 7 is just 1. So this is really just 3 over 5, right? I mean, officially, you would write 3 over 5 times 7 over 7, but because 7 divided by 7 is just 1, and 3, 3 over 5 times 1 is just 3 over 5. So, right, once you get used to this, you don't have to write this over and over again. You just cancel the, set, the factors of 7 and your answer is 3 over 5, okay? So what we've done is we took this 21 over 35 and we reduced it to its lowest terms. Reduced to lowest terms. And when we do that, we just get 3 over 5. Okay, so before we do some more examples, all right, let's go through the process, right? So to simplify a rational expression, Right? Remember, a rational expression is just n over d, numerator over denominator. Uh, there's really only two things you have to do. Right? First step is to factor the numerator and denominator completely. And the second step is to cancel any factors that are common to the numerator and denominator. Okay. And so that's what we did up here. We factor the 21 as 3 times 7. Those are the prime factors, right? And we factored the denominator as 5 times 7. Again, those are the prime factors, right? And then we canceled the common factor of 7, because that's common to the top and bottom. And when you do that, you're just left with the 3 over 5. Okay? So again, an easy example, but let's do a harder one now. Okay, so we want to simplify the rational expression 6x minus 15 over 12x minus 30. All right, so let's go through the process. First step, oops, is to factor the numerator and the denominator. Let's do one at a time. So let's start with factoring 6x minus 15. Okay, so this is a binomial, right? First step of factoring is GCF. The greatest common factor here um, is just 3, right? 
So we factor out the 3, and we're left with 2x minus 5. Right? And you can check 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, right? Right. But we also have to factor the denominator. In this case, 12x minus 30. Okay, so here the, the GCF is 6. And when you pull out the 6, you're left with 2x minus 5. Right? So we factored the numerator as 3 times 2x minus 5. We factored the denominator as 6 times 2x minus 5. Right? And so it should be pretty clear at this point that our common factor is the 2x minus 5. So we can cancel those, and we're left with 3 over 6. Right. However, we're not done, because we didn't factor this completely. Notice that 3 is prime, so it's just 3 times 1, but 6 is 3 times 2. So we can also cancel a common factor of 3. And now we're just left with 1 over 2, 1 half. Right. So there we go. We simplified all of this, this rather complicated uh, rational expression. And when you simplify it, you just get 1 half. Right. So 6x minus 15 over 12x minus 30 really just equals 1 half. So I'm going to write that down because that's kind of important, that this really is the same thing as 1 half. However, there's one kind of important point here that I want to emphasize, that remember, we have to make sure that the denominators here are not 0. right? And so notice, when the denominator is 0, right? when you solve this, uh, you just get... 5 over 2, right? So 30 over 12 reduces to 5 over 2. So this is a restricted value. Right. And so 6x minus 15 over 12x minus 30 does equal 1 half as long as x is not equal to 5 over 2. Um, but otherwise, without that one restricted value, um, they are equal. And you can try plugging in any x you want here, and you'll see that eventually it reduces to 1 half. Right. So for example, if x is, um, if x is just 2, right, and I evaluate 6x minus 15 over 12x minus 30, I get 6 times, oops, 6 times 2 minus 15, over 12 times 2 minus 30. So 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 times 2 is 24. So 12 over 15 is negative 3. 24, sorry, 12 minus 15 is negative 3. 24 minus 30 is negative 6. And negative 3 divided by negative 6 reduces to, you guessed it, 1 half, right? And I could have picked any x, right? I, there's nothing magical about x equals 2. I could have picked x equals, you know, negative 7. And if I plug that in, in other words, if I evaluate this expression at negative 7, I get 6 times negative, so I'm going to run out of space here. Sorry about that. 6 times negative 7 minus 15, all over 12 times negative 7 minus 30. So 6 times negative 7 is negative 42 minus 15. 12 times negative 7 is negative 84 minus 30. So we're going to end up with, let's see, negative 57 over negative 114. And the key thing here is that this is negative 1 times 57 over negative 2 times 57, and so 57 over 57 is 1. So negative 1 over negative 2 reduces to 1 half yet again. Okay, so it doesn't matter what x I choose. As long as I choose an x that's not equal to 5 over 2, then I will always get 1 half. So these two things really are equal. 
Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so our next example, we want to simplify 4x squared plus 13x plus 3 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. Okay, so we have our numerator, we have our denominator, and we want to simplify. So remember what that means. Let me go back and check the procedure here. First is to factor numerator and denominator completely. So it's basically two factoring problems in one here, right? Our first step, we have to factor 4x squared plus 13x plus 3. And we also have to factor the denominator, 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. Okay. And in fact, they're both done the same way, right? They're both done by using the AC method, right? So for the numerator, A is 4, B is 13, and C is 3. So A times C is 4 times 3, which is 12. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 but add to 13. So let's start with 1 times 12 is 12, and 1 plus 12 is 13, and there's our match, right? We got it right away on our first try. So that doesn't happen often, but we lucked out here, right? So remember, now we have to factor by grouping, so we split up the middle term, the 13x, and we're just going to write it as 1x plus 12x, right, which is 13x. From the first two terms, we just factor out an x, and we're left with 4x plus 1. From the last two terms, we can factor out a 3, and we're still left with 4x plus 1. Right? So when we factor out the 4x plus 1, we're left with x plus 3 is the other factor. So there we go. The numerator here is just 4x plus 1 times x plus 3. Okay, now that's only half the problem, right? Because now we have to factor the denominator as well. 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. So here a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative 9. So in this case, a times c is 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. So what two numbers? have a product of negative 18, and the sum has to be 3. All right, so negative 18, let's do negative 1 and 18. So negative 1 plus 18, oops, I'll do it over here, is 17, which is not equal to 3. We could try negative 2 times 9, that's negative 18. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7, and 7 is definitely not 3. But we can also do negative 3 times 6 is negative 18, and negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And there's our, there's our match, right? Okay, so now, in the little space I have over here, let's split up the middle term, the 3x. That becomes, well, negative 3x plus 6x, right? So 2x squared minus 3x plus 6x minus 9. And now factor by grouping. So from the first two terms, we can factor out an x, leaving us with 2x minus 3. From the last two terms, we can factor out a 3, and we're left with 2x minus 3. So we can factor this as 2x minus 3 times x plus 3. Right. And remember, that was the denominator. So let's just write that as the denominator, 2x minus 3 times x plus 3. Okay. So, right, so now we have our common factor, right? x plus 3 over x plus 3. That just cancels, right? That's equal to 1. So what are, what are we left with? We're left with 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 3. And we're done. Okay, so that's the simplified version, right? All of this mess here, when you simplify it, you're just left with 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 3. 
And so now it's in lowest terms. Okay. Now, some of you might be thinking, but wait a minute, what about 4 and 2, right? Isn't 4 divided by 2 just equal to 2? Right? In other words, can I just cancel the 2s here? So I understand what you're thinking, that, that, you know, that this is correct, 4 divided by 2 is 2, but be careful, the 4 and the 2 are not factors here, okay? So it's not, right, you're missing parentheses here, right? What we don't have is 4 times x plus 1 over 2 times x minus 3. There's no parentheses there, right? So 4 is not a factor of the numerator. It's only a factor of, right, the 4x. And the 2 is not a factor of the entire denominator, right? So, yeah, so we cannot cancel the 4 and the 2 here, right? Because we don't have the parentheses. We're not multiplying 4 times x plus 1. We're only multiplying the 4 times the x, not the 1. And in the denominator, we're not multiplying 2 times x minus 3. We're only multiplying the 2 times the x. We're not multiplying by the negative 3 here. So, yeah, so th this is, a, again, a very tricky thing, and it takes a lot of getting used to, right? So our, in our next example, we'll see, we'll see the difference here, when, you, when you're allowed to cancel and when you're not. Okay, so our next example says to simplify x plus 5 over x plus 10. Okay, and so... What do we have to do? We have to factor the numerator, right? So we have to factor x plus 5. And I hope you see that there's nothing to factor here, right? This is prime, right? It's not the difference of squares. It's not, right, it's not AC method. It's prime, right? And the same thing is true for x plus 10. So there is nothing to factor here. Everything is factored completely. Right, so now the question is, well, what can we cancel? Well, x plus 5 and x plus 10 are not the same factor. They're two different things. Right, so nothing cancels. Nothing cancels here. Right? If you're tempted to say, well, wait a minute, x divided by x, right, is 1. Oops, x divided by x is 1. Why can't I cancel the x's? Just do that. Because they're not factors, right? It's, it's not x times 5 over x times 10. It's x plus 5 over x plus 10, right? x is not a factor. So, right, you can only cancel factors, not terms, not things you add or subtract. Remember the original rule. The original rule was this. P times R over Q times R is equal to P over Q. Right? And we got that by just canceling the common factor of R. Right? There was no rule that said, well, if I have P plus R over Q plus R, then I can cancel the R's and write P over Q. In fact, there is no such rule. This is wrong. Right? You cannot do that. Okay, so this is something that, again, you have to kind of get used to here. It's a little weird at first. x plus 5 over x plus 10 is already simplified. It's in lowest terms. Right? There's nothing to factor, and there's nothing to cancel. Again, nothing cancels here, right? Not the x's. And not the fives either, right? You might think that five over 10 reduces to one over two. And that is true. But x plus five over x plus 10 does not reduce to, well, anything, right? It certainly doesn't reduce to x plus one over x plus two. In fact, they're just not equal, right? All you have to do is right, pick a value of x, like x equals two or negative three. Plug them in here, plug them in here, and you'll get two different numbers. So, right, so 5 over 10 is 1 half, this is true, but x plus 5 over x plus 10 is not x plus 1 over x plus 2, right? 
for the same reason that you don't cancel the x's here, right? right? So yeah, the x's don't cancel, and neither does the 5 or the 10. All right. Um, it, well, maybe we should, you know, we should maybe we should illustrate that if it helps, um, right? So let's take two plus five over two plus ten. Right, two plus five is seven, and two plus ten is twelve. Right, seven over twelve. On the other hand, if you cancel the twos, you're left with five over 10. And I guarantee you that five over 10 is not seven over 12. These are not equal, right? In fact, five over 10, as we said earlier, reduces to one half, right? And one half is not seven over 12, right? I mean, it might, you might say that it's close, but it's not exactly seven over twelve. They're not equal, so that's the that's the the danger you get if you try to cancel terms instead of factors. It's going to be wrong, so be careful of that. Okay, so here's a good example you can try: two x squared minus five x minus three over x squared minus nine. Right, so see if you can simplify that. Okay, so first thing you have to do, of course, is to factor both the numerator and denominator. Numerator probably being the more challenging thing here. This is the AC method, right? And you can factor 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, right, as 2x plus 1 times x minus 3, right? And that's by the AC method. Right? So hopefully you got that using the AC method. And then the denominator, you have to factor that as well. And that should be pretty easy. x squared minus 9 is really just x squared minus 3 squared. So it's the difference of squares, right? It's x minus 3 times x plus 3. So you just rewrite this with the numerator factored as 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. And the denominator factors as x minus 3 times x plus 3. And so we have a common factor of x minus 3. Right? They're not on top of each other, but it doesn't matter where they are. As long as one is in the numerator and one is in the denominator, they cancel. So we're left with 2x plus 1 over x plus 3. And that's it. Right? I hope you didn't cancel the x's. The x's don't cancel. They're not factors, right? So that's it. Um, right. So yeah, if this bothers you that they're not on top of each other, you could, of course, just rewrite this as say 2x plus 1 times x minus 3 right? over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Right? The, remember, the order doesn't matter, so you're allowed to switch, switch these. And then, right, you can see the x plus 3 on top of itself, so you cancel those and you're left with, well, the same thing, 2x plus 1 over x plus 3. Okay, let's try another one. Here we want to simplify u squared plus u minus 2 over u cubed plus 8. Okay, so a little bit of a trickier one. Um, for one reason, we're using u instead of x, um, but you really shouldn't let that bother you. In fact, if you want to change everything to x, change the u's to x, you can do that. But in the end, you want to change it back to u, right? So it, again, so don't let the, the fact that it's the variable here is u instead of x bother you. Um, the other thing that makes it tricky is the denominator, right? So when you factor the numerator, u squared plus u minus 2, well, what two numbers multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1? So there's not much choice here, right? It's either negative 2 and positive 1, or in this case, positive 2 and negative 1. So the numerator just factors as u plus 2 
times u minus 1. Okay. The denominator is a little bit harder because it's the sum of two perfect cubes, right? Which is not prime. Right. Obviously, if the denominator was prime, then there was there'd be nothing to cancel. Okay, but that's not the case here. All right, a cubed plus b cubed, just to remind you, is a plus b times a squared uh, minus a b plus b squared. I almost forgot myself. Right. So here, a is just u, and b is b is two. Right, because two cubed is eight. Yeah, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Right. All right, so this factors as u plus 2 times u squared minus uh, 2 times u plus 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so the denominator is u plus 2 times u squared minus 2u plus 4. Okay. And this is factored completely. Remember, these trinomials here are going to be prime. We're not going to consider them to be factorable, so we can leave those alone, right? But we do get a common factor of u plus 2, so we can cancel that. That's the second step, right? We cancel that, and we're left with u minus 1 in the numerator, and u squared minus 2u plus 4 in the denominator. And now it's simplified. Okay, so the next one's even more difficult. We want to simplify 25x squared minus 4y squared all over 5x squared plus 27xy plus 10y squared. Okay, so for the numerator, 25x squared minus 4y squared. Again, we've been skipping GCF, but it's, it's usually one. It is here. So this is the difference of two perfect squares, right? 5x quantity squared minus 2y quantity squared. So that's your a squared minus b squared. And you should recognize that that's 5x minus 2y, a minus b times a plus b. So 5x plus 2y, right? So that's just the numerator here. 5x minus 2y times 5x plus 2y. What about the denominator? The denominator is 5x squared plus 27xy plus 10y squared. Right. So it's a trinomial, and these are not perfect squares, so it's not going to be a perfect square trinomial. So it looks like we're, we're going to use the AC method again. So here, a times c is 5 times 10, which is 50. So what two numbers multiply to 50 and add to 27? So it's not... 1 and 50, because that's 51. Uh, 2 times 25 is 50, and 2 plus 25 is 27, and there's our match, right? So we're going to split this up here. Well, let me just rewrite it first. We're going to split up the middle term, right, the 27xy, as 2 plus 25, right? So so 2xy plus 25xy. And then factor by grouping. So I guess for the first two terms, we can factor out just an x, right? The x is the GCF. We're left with 5x plus 2y. For the last two terms, we can factor out a y, but the 25 and the 10 have a common factor of 5. So 5y. And so we're left with, let's see, 5x plus 2y. So this works. The 5x plus 2y is our common factor here. So we factor out the 5x plus 2y, and that multiplies x plus 5y. Right? There's a plus here. Okay, so that's the denominator, right? 5x plus 2y times x plus 5y. So what cancels, if anything? The 5x plus the 2y. So we cancel those, and we're left with the numerator being 5x minus 2y, the denominator being x plus 5y. And I think we're done. Now 
Okay. So maybe one more. Okay, so we want to simplify a squared plus 6a plus 8 all over a squared minus 10a plus 16. Okay, so we factor the numerator. And this should not be that hard since the, the a, the a in front here is 1. Again, different a, right? So what two numbers multiply to 8 and add to 6? So it's not 1 and 8. It's got to be 2 and 4. So 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 plus 4 is 6. And very similar for the denominator. What two numbers multiply to 16 and add to negative 10? So they're both negative. Uh, it's not 1 and 16. Uh, how about 2 times 8? 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 plus 8 is 10. Right. And so negative 2 plus negative 8 is negative 10. Right, so I think that's it. We factored the numerator, and we factored the denominator. Okay, so what cancels? Nothing, right? There's a big difference between a plus 2 and a minus 2, right? It's not the same factor. So there is no, there is no common factor here. Right? There's no factor that's the same in the numerator and the denominator, right? I mean, the a's are the same, but they're not factors, so they don't cancel. And the twos are the same, but they're not factors, they don't cancel. The factors are a plus two and a minus two, and they're not the same factor, right? And a plus four and a minus eight are also factors, but they're clearly not the same thing. So what does that mean? It means we're done. This is already simplified, right? So this is simplified. It is already in lowest terms, right? So it's, it's like saying, uh, you know, simplify you know, 4 over 7. You can't. It's already simplified, right? It's already in lowest terms. So this is already in lowest terms. I mean, the 7 is prime, right? And we could factor the 4 as 2 times 2, but 2 and 7 are not the same thing. So again, nothing cancels here. Okay, so your answer is just this, right? I would leave it factored, leave it in factored form just to, just to illustrate that there's no common factor. There's nothing that cancels you know, like there were in the, in the previous problems, right? In the previous problem, we did have a common factor of 5x plus 2y, and so that's what cancels, right? And I should specify that it's common in the numerator, and that, you know, there's one factor in the numerator, there's one factor in the denominator, right? You don't cancel the 2s because they're both in the numerator here, right? So if you have 2 over 2, that's equal to 1. The 2s cancel. But if you have 2 times 2, yeah, that's not 1. That's 4. So you don't cancel factors that are both in the numerator or both in the denominator. Anyways, uh, that should do it. I, again, I don't think they're going to get m much more difficult uh, than something like this. Um, but if, if you want one more really, really challenging one, let's, let's do one more. Okay, last one for sure. x to the fourth minus 81 all over x to the three minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 27. Right. And if you can get this, I think you'll be fine because this one's about as hard as, it's, as you're going to see here. Right. So remember, we have to factor the numerator and denominator. So let's factor x to the fourth minus 81. So the GCF is 1. So it's a difference of two perfect squares, right? It's x squared squared minus 9 squared. So here the a is x squared and the b is 9. So a, a minus b is x squared minus 9 and a plus b is x squared plus 9. But wait a minute, x squared minus 9 is also the difference of two squares, right? It's x squared minus 3 squared. 
So that factors as x minus 3 times x plus 3. Right? Now, we didn't do the same thing with the x squared plus 9 because that's the sum of two squares. Remember, the sum of two squares is prime. Okay, so the numerator factors as x minus 3 times x plus 3 times x squared plus 9, which, which can't go any further, right? x squared plus 9 is prime. All right. What about the denominator, right? So now we have to factor x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 27. So GCF is 1 again. And since it's four terms, let's try grouping. The first two terms you can factor out in x squared, and you're left with x minus 3. From the last two terms, you can factor out a 9, and you're left with x minus 3. So the denominator is x minus 3 times x squared plus 9. Okay. And I think that's as far as we can go, right? Because remember, x squared plus 9 is is considered prime. Can't go any further. Okay, so what can we cancel? Well, x minus 3 over x minus 3 is 1, so they cancel. And x squared plus 9 over x squared plus 9 is also 1, so they cancel. So we're left with x plus 3. Right, over 1, but, you know, anything divided by 1 is just itself. So this is really just x plus 3. Right. You know, I mean, if you leave it as x plus 3 over 1, uh, that's OK, but it's not simplified, right? It's like writing 5 divided by 1 instead of just 5. So yeah, it's right. So you should write it as x plus 3. You could lose a point for leaving it like this, right? So don't do that. Um, all right, so again, this, is, this was a little more complicated simply because we had to factor, in this case, a couple times, right? You can't leave it like this because it's not factored completely, right? And in fact, if you did that, you wouldn't be able to cancel the x minus 3s. So, so I hope that helps. Right. And that'll do it for this section.